Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I thank the Home Secretary for advance sight of his statement, and indeed the Immigration Minister for taking the time to speak to me earlier today as well. But, Mr. Speaker, these proposals will make us all poorer, economically, socially, and in terms of opportunity. Absolutely. They do not signify a global Britain, but an inward-looking government and a Prime Minister still obsessed with net migration targets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when the government talks about taking back control of our borders, what it means is ripping up mutual rights to live, study, work, yeah. and to enjoy family life across Europe, depriving future generations of the amazing opportunities that our generations have enjoyed. Free movement has been brilliant for our people and brilliant for Scotland and the United Kingdom too. And when the government talks about a skills-based system, it means nothing of this sort. It is, to all intents and purposes, a salary-based system. We are lightly talking about the carers, key NHS workers, lab technicians, researchers, bricklayers and other, other essential workers that this country needs. So why is the government intent on slashing the family, social security and settlement rights of workers coming here under the income threshold? These proposals are degrading for workers, they are bad for employers and bad for community cohesion. And why is the Home Secretary intent on forcing businesses to endure the expense, the red tape and the dubious reliability of a Home Office immigration system when free movement has worked perfectly well. This is the opposite of cutting bureaucracy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, will the, will the Home Secretary confirm the revenue that this will cost the Treasury and will he confirm what the analysis shows about lost growth to the economy? Finally, Mr Speaker, these announcements will be utterly disastrous for Scotland socially and economically. Has the Home Office modelled the effect that this will have on Scotland's population, economy and public finances? Does he seriously think reducing EU migration to Scotland, possibly by over, to, over 80 per cent, is a good thing? Mr Speaker, if this is the best the Government can do, then there is no better illustration about why we need decisions on immigration to be in Scotland's hands. First of all, Mr Speaker, the Honourable Gentleman claims that uh, having your own immigration system ending freedom of movement will make the country poorer. Well, he should uh, maybe focus his attention on the number of other large developed countries, take Australia, Canada, the United States, that have their own independent immigration system, and they're not poorer because of that. So I just don't think his logic follows at all, Mr Speaker. He also is arguing for continuing freedom of movement, and he should cast his mind back to just over two years ago when the British people voted to end it. The United Kingdom and Scottish citizens are members of the United Kingdom. They voted to end it. And then lastly, he raised the issue of the uh, salary threshold. Uh, it is, uh, when, it, when determining uh, skill levels, it is perfectly reasonable to take in, uh, in, as one of the factors that you take into account is salaries, but it shouldn't be based exclusively on that. And the MAC, if he cares to read the MAC report from September of this year, it will give a lot more evidence of why this is a perfectly reasonable approach.